인공지능 바둑 프로그램 알파고를 개발한 구글 디마인드의 CEO 데미스 하사비스가 대전 카이스트에서 학생들을 대상으로 강연했습니다. 하사비스는 강연에서 인공지능은 기계를 더 똑똑하게 만드는 강력한 기술이라며 인공지능 같은 강력한 신기술을 사용할 때는 윤리와 책임감이 뒤따라야 한다고 강조했습니다. 그럼 여기서 데미스 하사비스 구글 딥마인드 CEO의 강연 내용 직접 들어보시겠습니다. What is our mission? So we articulate it normally in two steps. So step one, fundamentally solve intelligence. And then step two, use it to try and solve everything else. But we're interested in building general purpose learning algorithms. So these are algorithms that learn automatically from raw inputs. They're not pre-programmed or handcrafted in any way. So we're only interested in algorithms, building algorithms at DeepMind that can learn for themselves directly from raw data and raw experience. Secondly, we're interested in the idea of generality. So this is uh, one system, uh, a single system or a single set of algorithms that can operate across a wide range of tasks out of the box. Of course, we have an example uh, of general purpose learning algorithms. It's up here. And the brain is um, the only example we have of that. Um, but we know this is possible. So of course, probably the most famous example still of uh, this kind of narrow AI system is Deep Blue. Uh, as you all know, um, famously beat Gary Kasparov in 1997. Um, but the thing about uh, Deep Blue was is that um, it couldn't do anything else. The systems and the program behind Deep Blue couldn't even be used to play a, a, a strictly simpler game. Like uh, in the UK, we call it noughts and crosses. A very simple game you teach children. And uh, even though Deep Blue uh, had mastered chess, None of the programs and none of the knowledge it had would be useful for um, any other game, let alone any other type of domain um, outside of games. So Deep Blue was an immense technical achievement. Of course, it was a huge watershed moment in AI. Um, but, uh, but what we want to try and do is go beyond that. Um, the reason we chose to work on AlphaGo, um, which I'll explain in a little bit, is that we wanted to see if these kinds of deep reinforcement learning techniques, you know, deep learning and reinforcement learning, could be put together with planning, uh, long-term planning. And uh, Go is actually the perfect uh, testing ground to do that. Because obviously, uh, it's a very intuitive game, and, uh, but you have to do calculation and planning as well. So how, how does uh, uh, AlphaGo differ from Deep Blue? So Deep Blue uh, used handcrafted chess knowledge distilled by the programmers uh, from talking to chess grandmasters. Uh, AlphaGo, by contrast, is knowledge learned from expert games and self-play. Uh, Deep Blue used full-width search. Uh, AlphaGo obviously uses the neural networks to do very selective, highly selective search. It, it's more human-like in the way that it, it tries to play. So, uh, these techniques we've developed and apply them to all kinds of important real-world problems. So the, uh, uh, the, the things we're looking at are healthcare applications, uh, robotics and control of robots, uh, and uh, smartphone assistance, making them more intelligent and smart uh, on your mobile phone. I think that two of the big issues facing us as a society today are information overload. We're just deluged with data, um, both as users and as scientists. Um, all the way from important things like genomics and, and, uh, and uh, physics, so much data, um, to things like entertainment where um, there are more TV channels than we can comprehend. So all these things uh, 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 mean that they have too much information for us to process. Um, then there's also system complexity. So the systems, the kind of systems we would like to um, understand better and master as a society are incredibly complex themselves. So climate, disease, energy, macroeconomics, all of these things are incredibly complicated systems. Um, and so I think of AI as a kind of meta solution to all these other problems. If we can make AI work in this kind of general way, then we should be able to apply it to help um, human scientists and clinicians and researchers to advance their areas more quickly. See, as with all powerful new technologies, uh, and AI is no exception, um, they must be used ethically and responsibly. I think that technology is kind of neutral in of itself, um, but it depends on how society decides to use it, whether it determines whether it becomes uh, for good or for bad. And I think human-level AI, uh, general AI, is decades away, 
but we should start the debate now and research into uh, into these ideas and uh, and uh, and think about the how we want to deploy these kinds of technologies. And then finally, as a neuroscientist, I'm also very intrigued by our own minds and how they work. And uh, I actually think that trying to build AI in this neuroscience-inspired way, in this general way, uh, and then comparing it to the human mind will maybe allow us to better understand some of the mysteries of our own minds.